And now, please welcome to the 2012 Red Hat Summit, Paul Cormier, President, Products and Technologies, Red Hat. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? So you know, um, it's great to be here again. Could we put my slides up, do you guys think? <laughs> um, it's great to be here again. Um, you know, as Jim said uh, last night, um, we had, uh, we had uh, a very interesting year, a very exciting year this year. Um, we, did, we did two major events this year since we last, since we last met with you guys. Uh, first thing is we had we reached a billion dollars, as Jim talked about last night, as a company, which is a major, major deal. And the second thing is, the reason why we hit a billion dollars, because we had the 10-year anniversary of RHEL, which was a huge thing. And so, you know, at, we did some events around this, and I often got asked, you know, you know, you've been at Red Hat a long time, what's been your proudest moment at Red Hat? And, you know, the... First thing, unfortunately, it's a good thing and a bad thing, but I often say the first thing that pops into my head. First thing I said was, I get to have that proudest moment every year, and this is it. To see, to see everything here, to see all you guys here, uh, both you know, from, from Red Hat and our customers and our partners, and what we've done in bringing Linux to the enterprise, that's the proudest moment, and we get to do it every single day and get to be here every year. So, so thank you guys for coming again. It's awesome. And, and welcome. But you know, it's not, only, it's not only me that's talked about that. I mean, if you, if you say it, you know, Simon Phipps says that you know, open source has changed the world. And how can you not agree with that? Just, just look at where we are today, look at where it is in the enterprise. And so, you know, at, the time, at a time too when um, the economies had one of the toughest times in history, Worldwide Linux subscriptions and maintenance has just been on a straight trajectory forward. So that, that's a testament unto itself on the kind of value that open source and Linux bring to the enterprise. Did you know that 28 stock exchanges in 28 countries running 50% of the world's trading runs on open source and, and Linux, Red Hat Enterprise Linux? That's, that's pretty amazing. That's, that's just a testament of how mission critical it is and how mission critical it's become. Between 2009 and, and 14, it's predicted that Unix revenues, Unix revenues are expected to decline while Linux re revenues will continue on that trajectory forward. You know, there's a lot of analysts out there and they say things like, in 2000, by 2014, 75% of well-managed open source software investments will, will result in a positive ROI. It's mainstream, guys. You know, when we first started down this path, it was we were explaining, is it secure, is it real, and all that. It is mainstream, guys. And, if, and it's not just us in the open source world that say it. It's mainstream analysts, it's mainstream journalists. But you know, while we're doing this, and while we're going through this transformation, IT execs and CIOs, they still have a lot of challenges out there. They've got much traditional IT, and infrastructure still in place within their enterprise, that from, from the application all the way down to a multitude of hardware, sorry. Um, they're in process of virtualizing their workloads. They have decisions about what OS to run, what hypervisor to run, how will the application respond, to moving now to applications to the public cloud where, where it's appropriate. Really, it's complexity on top of complexity that they're really driving now. But if you look at how open source has played in this, it's played a very significant part in each one of those footprints today, to, from traditional to virtualized to the cloud. The power of so many projects, so many contributors, many of which are here today, is one of the things that's driven cloud implementations to be built on open source. There's no question about that. I mean, you look at it, and there's just it's just obvious of why they've built cloud infrastructures on open source. But, you know, I've talked to, over the last couple of years about this, but let's just refresh on how we got from an industry perspective to where we are today. You know, in the early days, 
We were all, some of us were part of it, not all of us. <laughs> in the early days, we had the proprietary stacks from the vendors. They had from the application through all the way through the stack to the hardware was proprietary. It was a great business for those guys. To the Redmond idea of the world, where you had one software stack from one proprietary vendor. To the 2000s, starting with Linux and the LAMP stack in middleware, all developed on the power of open source. That started to become mainstream into enterprise class data center, production data center sites. That's really been the transi transition in how far open source has come in there. And it brings us all the way to, to today, cloud technologies. This is one of the biggest revolutions in the IT, in IT technology history. It's only made possible and practical because of open source. Clouds are built on open source, period. Applications are being built in the cloud. Roughly 70% of cloud guests running today are Linux. I mean, if this is not more testament that open source has, the, has arrived, I just don't know what is. You know, open source is driving, this isn't, these aren't my words here, but a mainstream journalist, open source is driving the next major inflection point in the industry. It really has changed the world. It would be expected that this room would be saying that for the last few years to come, but this is from a mainstream journalist. I think that's what makes that so significant. You know, CIOs and IT managers, they have one of the most critical decisions to make right now. It could be the most critical decision they make in this, in this decade. Their, fu their futures will depend on how well they make this, these decisions. Their futures will depend on how well they know their customers. And it's changing, it's changing dramatically. In many cases, APIs will now be how these CIOs communicate with their customers. Mobile and social capable applications are the norm, they're the mainstream, even in enterprise class um, application development. This is all gonna be enabled by this new IT structure, infrastructure that we're all calling cloud. CIOs have one of the most critical decisions in, the, in years to come on how, in, how they're gonna get to the cloud. They've got a couple different ways to do it, three specifically different ways to do it. The first way, start from scratch. It's not very practical. And you know, while it may be simple, you can't stop the business while you re-architect. Not, not all applications are gonna fit into this model. It has a huge cost and it has a huge risk associated with it. The second is add a silo, add a cloud silo to your existing infrastructure. This is what VMware wants you to do. Frankly, it's all that VMware can do. That's probably why they want you to do it. And what it means is you're building a portion of your servers that are VMware servers into a cloud. But what do you do with the other 50 to 70% of your servers that aren't VMware servers. It just adds more complexity to an already complex environment. It's even more lock-in with less control. This is really lock-in by the new generation vendors. Remember I talked about those guys in the 80s and 90s? This is just a new, a new version of lock-in um, by, by the different class, by the next generation of those vendors. The third way is open hybrid cloud, what we're calling open hybrid cloud. It really, we think it's really the only way to go. You utilize all your existing resources in building the cloud. Support of any type of capacity that you already have in your cloud, in building your cloud. And it's not just capacity from Red Hat or VMware or Microsoft, but we take advantage of the benefits from whatever capacity you're running. And it's on your terms in your, in your time frame. You have, as the CIO, complete control over your infrastructure, both technologically and economically. As I said, really feel this is the only practical way for enterprises to realize the benefits of the cloud. 
It really, this is the way to take advantage of that next generation. And one of the things I'm going to say over and over and over, one of the things that's really important in this transition is consistent application environment from on-premise to virtualized to the cloud. It takes much, much more than a hypervisor to accomplish this, despite one of what some of our competitors might say. Applications run on operating systems and middleware. Again, application consistency across that layer, across the vert layer, across the OS layer, across the middleware layer is key to realize this transition. Consistent storage and the ability to manage those pieces across that infrastructure is also very, very key for this being successful. There's really only two companies that have the pieces that can make this a reality today, Microsoft and Red Hat. We're the open source, we're the open source choice for that transition. They're the legacy proprietary choice. You choose, our customers choose. So today, what we're going to announce, you know, Jim said this last night, and you know, did, you know, I get all the fun to announce, to, to announce our new products, and that is all the fun. We're going, to, we're going to talk about today four new offerings that we're going to bring to the market starting today. It's, it's, they're built on the power of our open source products, and the main goal here was to accomplish open hybrid cloud for our customers. These solutions are built from our products products that have been powering the enterprise for over a decade. The, these, these same technologies and products have, have been helping customers build, they will help customers build what many of the cloud providers have built today and are running today. Moving to cloud on Red Hat technologies, this is really bringing open hybrid as a reality today. The first is enter enterprise platform as a service. It's built on OpenShift our leading cloud application platform for the enterprise. You know, PaaS for the enterprise is something that our customers have been asking for for a while since we put OpenShift out into the cloud. And as we've really looked at this and talked to our customer base, we re we've realized there's really three major people in the enterprise that are interested and have responsibility to build next-gen applications. They all have different needs, each of their needs needs to be satisfied for PaaS to be really, truly enterprise grade. They all also have a strong relationship with each other. So you've got to be able to give these needs and be able to keep those relationships intact for this to be successful in the enterprise. Enterprise, enterprise, IT, man, uh, enterprise IT is used to managing applications. It's often called, oftentimes called IT ops. This is a critical feature that we bring to, the, to our PaaS platform. Many people think DevOps or developers actually managing the operations themselves is the model and the way to go of the future. We also bring that to this PaaS platform. You choose. Offline, locally managed, or Red Hat managed, this is the first platform that brings all of those attributes together into one. So let's talk about some of those requirements of the, of the stakeholders that we talk about here and what, we're, what we've accomplished and what we've set out to accomplish here. For the developer, it's still all about tools, middleware, and ultimate, ultimately application portability. Very, very important from a developer perspective. For the enterprise architect, it's about security, compliance, location of data, and scalability. And for the enterprise admin, it's all about public, on-premise, and as they implement, hybrid cloud, while, while having the most economies of scale, the most secure, and being the most available. There's, there's many technology pieces that are part of this to satisfy all these needs. And, and there's, there's pieces way beyond what the hypervisor, as I talked about, that you need to really accomplish this. First, let's take a piece, let's take a look at the first critical piece. The first thing you need is a secure multi-tenant operating system. And with critical, with critical components that ensure that application consistency. Things like runtimes, libraries, security, multi-tenancy. Developers have had years of experience developing on RHEL. And now RHEL, in the latest release, with a higher application density than what the conventional industry 
can offer is really one of the things that makes this possible. Again, application consistency across all those environments, very key. Next, to, in order to accomplish this, it takes enterprise class middleware. This is JBoss, simple, very simple. This is the same JBoss that countless application developers have been building on for years. More importantly, it, it's, it's, you, you maintain those enterprise class services unlike any other PaaS platform. Services like ED, EE6, transactions, CDI, messaging, maintained in this PaaS environment. Many of our competitors can't, they can't, they can't provide this application consistency, but they also can't provide these services in a plat, PaaS platform. So no matter what they tell you, Again, you need this for app consistency across that environment. The community and our partners are also very key to this platform to be successful. We think it's important to give our developers the best range of services. The services that I talked about, the enterprise class services are very important. They continue to be important, but there's also new services every day that come that developers expect. It's not just from us but from a wide range of partners. Apps built seamlessly with, with, with ours as well of our, as our partners' services because of a cart the cartridge architecture that we introduced with the OpenShift platform. We're bringing this strong ecosystem to the PaaS world just as we did with Linux. That's one of the things that made Linux successful in the enterprise, and we think that that ecosystem is what will make, one of the things that will make the PaaS platform successful in the enterprise. Of course, developers need tools, tools, strong, comprehensive tools. Tools for developers building cloud apps with the capability to build applications as, as part of an overall PaaS platform. The, the, the developer chooses the language or the framework, the platform just supports it. As I said, enterprise class services that have been and continue to be available in the JBoss stack on premise in the enterprise today are available on this platform. Once again, choice for the developer in this case. And as I've been talking about, delivering a complete solution takes many of the pieces. They take, takes many of the pieces that enterprise class developers have had for some time, and they continue to demand those pieces. We recognize that there are many, many, many types of applications being developed today, many, many different types and new types of applications, web, mobile, big data apps, but those are now being developed for and in the enterprise. That's what this platform is ta targeting about. OpenShift has taken this all into account with this latest offering. So that's the first, um, that's the first solution that we're bringing in this, in this launch. We'll talk a little bit on how we got here. You know, we, we've worked on, you know, we, we might, many of you might think that OpenShift just started last year. But as I said, RHEL, JBoss, many of the pieces have, what, have what's been building on that for years. But where we got to, the timeline on OpenShift started last year out into the world. That had also been worked on for some time. We launched OpenShift.com last May. First time bringing an open PaaS platform to developers accessible in the cloud. In April of this year, we released, we released OpenShift.Origin, offline, locally managed. And in true open source fashion, developers can now take this technology where they want. In June, now, we bring OpenShift for IT to ops to the enterprise, IT managed. This is what IT demands in the enterprise is the capability to manage this, all on the with the power of the hosted PaaS development platform, taking advantage of all the Red Hat services that have been there for years to develop apps. We're now using those to build apps in the cloud. Coming soon, we'll add OpenShift DevOps for, for development operations, developer managed with all the power, security, and manageability required by the enterprise. We think that's one of the linchpins of this. You know, in cloud development, developers need the flexibility to manage. In this, in this scenario, we give that flexibility and still giving control to IT. 
The next major announcement here, and we've got lots of it, so I apologize for moving so fast, but we've got four very big ones. The next major announcement is hybrid infrastructure as a service solution. You know, some of the things that our customers are wrestling with on this is hybrid seems too complex to them. They're worried about the complexity of setting up a hybrid environment. They're worried about the cost. How do I even get there? They're thinking, I need something that's simple to build in order for me to really, to really pull this off. I need something that's simple to manage once it's, in, once it's installed, and I need something that I can grow with in a simple way. These are the pieces that we've tried to uh, incorporate, and these are the requirements that we've tried to incorporate in this infrastructure as a service platform. All the components are here, from the hypervisor through vert management, through cloud orchestration, systems provisioning, governed self-service, and a guest operating system, all the way to public cloud capacity at one simple price for guest. So, you know, in our customers consuming this, it's not necessarily just about the technology, it's about the ease of consumption from a business perspective as well. So we're bringing this together one simple price for get per guest, and we think that's very important. Um, we think that's very important for this adoption in the enterprise. And as I've said many times, there's only two vendors out there that can provide these pieces, and you know who they are. This solution combines virtualization with the abilities to run workloads in any type of footprint, a rev footprint, a VMware footprint, or a public cloud footprint. Once again, our strategy from day one and, and the mantra of this company from day one is to give choice. If that's the choice and that's how you utilize your existing environment, that's what we support here. We add with this life cycle management that allows IT to continue to set the policy. When to run the apps, where to run the apps, how to run the apps. Do I optimize for cost, for security, for performance? IT again gains control of the policy around this while giving the developers and the users the elasticity for as they want in on-demand self-service. That's what they've come to expect in, in cloud development, application development. So we're bringing those two things together on the, in the enterprise, for the enterprise. We integrate all of this with public cloud capacity, thus creating the first integrated hybrid cloud. This is the model that we think uh, brings our customers into that world. The next major c capability that we think that is essential to bring, to, to make hybrid a reality, is storage. We think storage is very, very important in this hybrid model. You know, we brought in a company late last year called Gluster that had some very, very interesting technology. And when we looked at this, at this company, we, were we got very excited. And we looked really at three use cases as we bring this to the market today. Virtualization and integrating this with our virtualization platform, thus supporting storage virtualization. Bringing elastic enterprise class storage to the cloud. The ability to grow your storage infrastructure out into the cloud. Common storage from on-premise to the private to the public cloud is key to seamless hybrid support. Compute and storage, we think, are the two key services that must span all the way out into the cloud to give that true hybrid environment. And the third use case we saw for this was to get some control over big data and no SQL data. The sprawl of data within the enterprise and the infrastructure has just been tremendous, I think, uh, Jim and Robert talked about that last night and gave some good statistics of that sprawl of data. Bringing this together in one consistent storage environment we think is very important. So those were the three use cases that we saw for this technology as we brought it into the company. And so if you look at this, if you look at what's really happening in this space, it, I think it very much parallels what happened in the server and Linux market over the last decade or so. Linux and open source and x86 really transformed that server market. We went from the vendor specialized stacks 
to open solutions with more choice than we've ever had. Look where we are today over the last 10 years. That same thing is happening now in the storage market. The market's transforming just as it did in the past server market transformation. And now in the storage space, our customers will be able to get more choice, more open, and more capability. We can now enable our customers to not only tie their disparate to data together that's within their own four walls, but across their entire enterprise. We can also bring in their remote sites, but even now, when they have resources out into the cloud, we can enable that from a, from a storage architecture perspective, all with one common storage namespace. Again, enabling applications access to common data. It doesn't matter where, where the storage is running, whether it's in private, public, or out into the cloud. We think this is another key component to true open hybrid cloud computing. And the industry's already taken notice. These are, some of the, these are some of the partners and people we're working with this and customers we're weak working on this. This has been one of the most exciting new technologies that we've had into the company in, in our history. So I, I, this is going to really enable, enable and really excel that transformation to the cloud. And finally, the last of the four solutions that we're going to talk about today is we need to make it simple for our customers to get to the cloud. You know, as Robert said last night, there's so much hype and so much, so many different interpretations of what cloud is. We need to make it simple for our customers. That's what our customers have been telling us for some time now. You know, our, our, our CIOs have been through three distinct phases, as I've talked about. Physical systems, which they're now starting to consolidate. They're in the process of virtualizing workloads where it makes sense. And then they're looking at how to automate that. And they want to get all the benefits of the cloud with true service level automation. But they must manage from traditional, physical, to virtual, to cloud. These are the problems that we've been seeing. So, so CIOs need to virtualize in order to get to the cloud. But they have many questions. Do I need to virtualize first? How do I pay for it? How do I not lose control? Those are, those are the things that, that they look at every single day. And these are the things that, that they worry about every single day. We have the answer. Move to the cloud for the price of virtualization. For the first time, we enable our customers with this solution to move to the cloud for what the other guys charge for virtualization only. We think this is a, a big advantage from our customer standpoint to just make it easy and simple. We bring vert management, cloud orchestration, and system management directly together to our customers to move them directly to the cloud. That's something that they've been asking us, us for, t for some time. So these are the four solutions today that we think is going to start this in making open hybrid cloud a reality. We'd like you, you'll hear much, much more about this today. Brian will touch tomorrow on some of the technologies that got us here. You'll see this in the sessions. You'll see these in the sessions today. You'll see these in work in the sessions today. I urge you to take a look at that. Let's also take a look just for a little background on how we did this and some of the points that got us here. Again. I didn't go all the way back to bringing RHEL and JBoss to the enterprise market over the years, but it, you know, that didn't come overnight, but this portfolio itself that leverages all that also did not come, come overnight. First, in 2009, we introduced Red Hat Virtualization 2.0 after we brought a company called Kubernetes into the company. Then, in 2010, we helped our customers start to put that together with our industry standard Linux that had been out there for a number of years. Remember, the OS is a big part of any solution here, whether bare metal, virtualized, or in the cloud. Apps run on OSs, despite what others may tell you. In 2011, we, in, we brought cloud forms to the market. Application or, or orchestration across many environments to add to these solutions that, um, that we've brought out in the previous years. This started really 
the bringing of real solutions to the market, and, and more importantly, giving our CIOs and, and enterprise managers the ability to deploy these solutions with no lock-in. That was one of the biggest things that when bringing that to the market. Cloud Forms goes into general availability now. We introduced Red Hat 3.0 virtualization earlier in the year. Enterprise hybrid infrastructure as a service. We now make it possible and easier and easy for our customers to go directly to the cloud. And the proof point that these technologies scale to meet the, most, the, demand, the needs of our, our most demanding customers and partners is, is simple. Top clouds run on Red Hat, such as, such as these. These top clouds run on Red Hat. There's a reason that technology scales. That's, that's the proof point. You know, I said earlier that the CIO's move to the cloud will be one of the biggest decisions that they have to make in probably the next dec decade. I stand by that. I still stand by that. You know, and there's a lot of companies out there and Robert LeBlanc from IBM said this last night as well. There's a lot of companies out there that are trying to make cloud computing what we saw for lock-in back in the 80s and the 90s. We, we together transformed the last decade bringing together Linux and open source for the enterprise, to the enterprise, run by the enterprise, accepted by the enterprise, powering the enterprise. We did that together in the last decade. Together, we can make clouds truly open and hybrid, and truly open and hybrid, and once again transform the industry in this decade. The world is open, keep it open, it's up to us. Thank you.